Hello everyone, welcome to a Maya 2 DaVinci Resolve tutorial. So today's lesson we are going to just do the workflow of how to set up your animation for rendering and then how to take that animation, bring it into DaVinci and composite it together to create a finished video. So in the past lessons we've created this model here, rig and even animations. Um, so to set this guy up for rendering, now the animations I set up are actually supposed to be sent over to Unity, which we'll do in a different lesson. Um, but um, to set it up for rendering, we're just going to use this as an example anyways. Um, we're going to go to our render settings, which is this icon right here. And we are going to make sure that our pathway is set up correctly. So we have our path. You can see here it goes to my desktop, to my product folder, into the images folder, which is what you want. If this ever says default Maya anything, it's going to the default Maya product folder inside uh, your computer at where Maya was created, um, which makes it more difficult to find where it's been rendered to. So make sure that your pathway is set up correctly. If it's not, make sure you go to file and set project, then find your product folder and set it to that one. Otherwise, you'll be doing a scavenger hunt trying to find your rendered images. Okay, presuming this is correct, um, we're going to file output. Make sure that we're using a PNG. You can use a different file format if you like. I just find that PNGs are the most widely accepted. Um, you could also use a, uh, a Targa. Um, some of these other ones will work as well. Usually Targa or PNG are the two I recommend. Next, make sure you have frame slash animation set to name.number.extension and not single frame. Otherwise, you'll just be rendering a single image and not an actual sequence. Frame padding will leave at four. Um, start and end frames, these are going to be set up based on which uh, clips you want. So if I want to render from 1 to, uh, let's see here, to 30, that's where this walk cycle ended, I would put 1 as the start frame, 30 as the end frame. If I was wanting to catch the run cycle, I'd start 40 and go to 60 and change that to 40 and 60, and that's pretty much what I've done. Um, camera I'm using, perspective camera is the one that I have currently, but if you have a uh, virtually created camera that you have set up. You can go to create and they have cameras and they have camera, camera and aim, camera and aim app, uh, stereo camera, multi stereo rig, all these will work just fine. Just make sure that once you've selected one, set it up inside here that this is where you choose which camera you're going to be rendering from. Presets always have mine set to 1080. You can go ahead and change that if you want to, but in my class, I want you to render at 1080. Um, okay. Maya software tab. So that we are on the common tab before, we're on the Maya software tab now. Um, make sure that you set the quality level to the appropriate level. Um, you can go to a medium or high quality. It'll just take longer for rendering, but you'll have better finished product depending on which one you pick. Um, it'll do anti-aliasing and stuff like that for you. And it'll go ahead and change all these precepts here to match uh, whatever uh, mid and high quality is. So you'll see that if I go over to medium or uh, high, they'll start to change some of these, um, or I guess it's uh, these ones. So preview quality, and then you have intermediate quality, you see how it unlocks some of this other stuff, and then you have production quality, and then it goes through and starts adding extras. Um, I'm going to leave mine at preview quality. Um, make sure that ray tracing quality is turned on, so you're going to turn on ray tracing. If this one here is not checked, you won't have any shadows inside your scene, so make sure you activate this one. Okay. Once that's all set up, now you're ready to batch render. So we're going to change this menu sets from the modeling menu sets over to our rendering menu sets. And then we'll go to our renderer dropdown and go to batch render. And if you have multiple cores, you can also pick how many processors that you're able to use. So use all available processors, or you can say if I have eight cores, I'm going to use four of those eight cores for batch rendering. That way you're not just pretty much locking down your computer for batch render. Okay. So I've already went through and batch rendered this all out. And the way I like to organize my batch renders is into product folders. So let's go ahead and set this off to the side for a moment. We're not ready to get into DaVinci quite yet. Uh, let's see here, where did I put the dude folder? Uh, let's see here. I might actually have him, let me just look at my pathway where I have to set up at. I know it's on the desktop. Yep, it's on the desktop. Okay. Organize my stuff and kind of put it somewhere I didn't remember. Okay. Um, 
There it is. Images. So I took an each sequence and just put them in respective folders. That way when I bring them into DaVinci, they'll I can select all of them and not have to worry about parsing them. Otherwise, they'll just be in this big mob in here. And so if you have one, two, and you have like different shots, it'll be a one, one, two, two, and stuff like that. So um, this will just help with that. Okay, so now to DaVinci. Um, let's go ahead and create ourselves a new project. Okay. And we're going to import our media. So we're going to go to File. And uh, let's actually see if I can change the name on this guy. Project Settings. No. All right. Something I was thinking about afterwards. I want to change this part here. And admittedly, I am a little bit new to, to DaVinci. The reason why we're going with this route right now for my class is because we're used to using After Effects and Premiere. Um, but we're not on the college. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and save this project as um, uh, let's see here. We'll call it the dude animation. Okay. Now it's with the right name. All right, so now let's go ahead and bring in our data. So I can go to the file and we'll go to import media. Now, those of you who have taken me, my classes and know about how I do After Effects, DaVinci is a little bit different. You can't just select the first image in the sequence and DaVinci automatically pulls the rest of it in. It'll just bring in a single image if you do it that way. Um, so, let me see here, there's the dude. Um, what you need to do is go into this folder and actually select all of them. So I just select the first one, I'll hit Control A, that'll give me all of them, and then I'll hit Open. And I have it up here. Okay. <clears throat> so I can go ahead and drag this down to the timeline. There it is. Shot one. I can bring in the next one here as well. So import media. Shot two. Just go to all of it and open again. Just keep going through and get all of them so I have all three. Control all, hit open. There's the next one. File, import media. Open, there's shot four. And import media. There we go, shot five. Okay, so now I can go ahead and take some of these other ones in here, drag them down. I can just butt it up against this one. Or if I want to, I could stack them, or I can keep them on the same line. I'll just keep them on the same line for now because I'm not doing fades or overlaps at the moment. Um, lock it in there. Okay. That's good as well. All right, let's go ahead and preview this out now. idle cycle there. There we go. And that's the end of it. Okay, so let's say that you're content with your animation. You weren't going to do any further editing. Um, we'll go over to delivery. So down here at the bottom, you see where it said media to begin with. Then we're in the edit mode. Um, now we can go to uh, delivery. Now there are some other options here for color and fair life. We want to do color, color corrections or add music. Um, I think that I'll save those for some uh, some later tutorials, um, but let's go straight to delivery for right now. Keep it bare bones. Okay, so picking the the format that I want to use, I want this to be able to go onto YouTube. YouTube already has a pretty good setup as far as what the format should be, and it'll also compress down to H.264, which makes it to where it's a good quality, um, but at a smaller file size. So I'll click on YouTube. You can see Codex is set to H.264 or H. 0.264 um, single clip um, location that it's going to go to uh, we're going to set it to go to uh, we'll go to our C drive and say okay 
All right. And now we can just go over here and hit, say, start render. Oh, I'm sorry, we have to add it to the render queue. So uh, before we go there, this icon right here, if you don't click this, it won't be added to the render queue job over here. There we go. Let's go ahead and hit start render. There we go. Runs through the process fairly quickly. Okay. So now I can go ahead and find it. Let's go over to uh, play the scavenger hunt. So this PC. I suppose I could have picked a better place to put this, but here we are. There's the video right there. Okay, and then let's go ahead and play it. There's our finished animation. Good to go. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. This is a Maya to Da Vinci tutorial series. Uh, we'll probably have some more added on as the term goes along, but this was the bare bones. Uh, straight from Maya, straight to Da Vinci, with no extra bells or whistles, no uh, effects or like corrections or audio. Um, stay tuned though, we'll probably be building to this playlist where we'll have um, audio added and we'll be doing some clip corrections in the future um, and some lighting corrections in the future as well. So thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next lesson.